Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Okay, so today we're going to be painting Here Comes Santa. I'm going to be sipping on a little Chardonnay. And if you enjoy this video, I do encourage you to like and subscribe to my channel and to also check out my Patreon page where you'll find some additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Okay, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, ultramarine blue, Mars black, fire red, and green oxide. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. I'm using two brushes today. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush and I have a number one round brush and I'm gonna to refer to these as small and large as we go through the painting process. And if you're painting along with me, you're probably gonna to want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I do have a couple of additional resources for you that can help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same paint and the brushes and all that good stuff. So that's there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we are doing the first layer of our sky. We're gonna be using black, brown, blue, and white. I'm gonna be using my large brush. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to be placing my moon, it's gonna be really big, probably like the size of a softball, somewhere around this area. So what I'm first gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda of give myself almost like a, a horizon line, but just a a light horizon line just to give me an idea of where to stop my sky. So I'm just gonna put a touch of black, blue, and brown on my brush at the same time. On the left hand side, I'm gonna make myself a mark. I would say, if this is my halfway point, I'm just a little bit below that, so somewhere around here. Then I'm gonna use my brush as a measuring tool to mark it with my finger and come over onto the other side and make myself another mark about the same height. And then I'm just gonna kind of give myself a really, just a sketchy kind of outline. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe those remnants off on my paper towel. I don't wanna wash it, I'm just gonna wipe them off. And I'm gonna pick up some white, and this is gonna start my moon. So my moon is gonna be to the left of my center. So if this is my center, I'm gonna have it to the left of that, maybe somewhere about here. And I'm gonna make mine like the size of a softball or a grapefruit, maybe, maybe a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. You can certainly make yours whatever size you want, but I'm gonna have these seemingly kind of grayish tones to start. I will, on our second pass of the moon, I'll make it nice and bright, bright to give it like a little three-dimensional look to it. But once I've got my, my moon placed where I want it to be placed, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna alternate those other colors, which are black, blue, brown. I'm not gonna wash my brush. I might pick up a little bit more white here and there, but I'm gonna start with the sky around the moon with those remnants of white. So it will naturally be the lightest around here. I'm gonna be applying my sky in a circular motion. So I'm just gonna start by picking up a little bit of black with the remnants on my brush. And I'm just gonna start going in this circular motion. Now I'm picking up a little bit of brown, going in this circular motion. I do want it to hit my sky, or my, um, my moon. So as I'm doing this, I do wanna come in close to that moon. And you can use a combination of those circular brush strokes as well as a, a clean, soft brush stroke right around the edge of the, 
of the moon. So you want it to kind of have a nice meeting point, but it doesn't have to be super clean. I'm gonna have my moon almost glowy around the edges, so it, it, it will naturally not have a really clean edge. It's almost gonna be making the sky next to it glow. So as I get further away from my moon, it's gonna get darker and darker because I'm not gonna pick up any more white. So that, that white is at the moment just working its way off of my brush. And you can see as I'm going closer to that moon, I just almost use a light brush stroke around it just to get it to blend in a little bit. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and finish that sky up with these circular motions. If you can get the sky to be nice and dark, right around that horizon and over along the edges. That's gonna make it look really nice and natural, so to speak, because it's getting a little bit further away from the moon and so it's gonna get a little bit darker as it goes away. But I'm envisioning this sky to be just a deep winter sky that maybe has some, some clouds floating by. It's the late December, perhaps because I'm gonna have Santa going across my sky, so it totally has to be late, late December. But you could imagine yours to be another time of the, the season if you want to, but this is gonna just, it's gonna have a really cold feel to it with the blues and the grays. And But I like to use brown to give it a nice natural hue to it. So that's why I, I like incorporating brown in a lot of my paintings. So you'll you'll see that a lot if you follow if you follow my other videos. And as you can see, I'm getting darker and darker as it goes towards those edges. And again, don't worry if it's not perfect at this point because we are going to be doing another layer to it. And if you are using the, a similar brush as I am, this bristle brush, it will tend to look really scratchy and have a lot of swirl marks in it at this point. Don't worry about it because when we do the second layer, it will soften it up. So I am really just looking for a first coat on here. Nothing that is over the top finished looking, it's just something that's gonna act as a base coat for the rest of my sky. So I've got that all nice and colored in now, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be using the same brush for the next step, but I am going to wash it and dry it in between. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our water. So the water is meant to be a reflection of the sky. So I'm gonna be using the same colors in the water. I'm gonna have my water come about halfway between my horizon and the bottom of my canvas. And I'm not concerned about it being a straight line because I'm gonna have my land is gonna almost be ripply around the edge. So when you get to where you wanna stop, which is why I'm not making a line, you can certainly do it uneven. So when we go to do the land, but if it turns out straight for now, don't worry about it. We can make it uneven when we do the land. So how I'm gonna do this, I'm using my large brush. I'm gonna be using white, blue, brown, and black. I'm gonna start with white on my brush and I'm going to give myself a clean horizon line. So how I'm gonna do this is I've got to visually look and see where the highest spot of my area that meets my sky is that's unpainted. So you can just pick a high spot and you, oops, don't drop your brush though. <laughs> oh, my paint's still wet. So you can just pick a high spot and mark it with your finger, somewhere like that. Come to one side, make a mark, and come to the other side, make a mark, and then you're gonna connect these two marks. I like to keep my eye on the prize, which is the other dot. If, you were, if you're working on top of wet paint, like your sky area is still a little wet, don't worry about that. It's just gonna blend right in and it's gonna look fantastic. So I am keeping my eye on the prize, which is this other mark. And if you need to go back and do a little adjusting, so be it. And it doesn't have to be perfectly straight, just something that doesn't look like we're on a ship will work. And then once I've got that on there, looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna just pick up some more white and I'm gonna start my reflection of my moon. So I'm gonna have this going at a diagonal. It's gonna be widest where the moon 
is up here. I'm going to be using a left to right brush stroke, something like this. And I probably have little remnants of whatever wet sky I ran into when I was doing that horizon line, which is totally fine. And I'm going to do this left to right diagonal kind of light area, which might be a little difficult to detect while I'm painting white on white. But as soon as I start incorporating those other colors, you'll see it. So I'm just picking up a little bit of brown now because I see brown right here. So I'm going to just incorporate a little bit of brown along the edge of here. And maybe I'm going to pick up a little bit of blue because I see blue in through there. And it doesn't have to be a mirror image per se. You're just really looking for similar color pattern. I see black right here. So I'm going to put black down in through here. And I'm just going left to right. I'm not using a ton of paint on my brush right now because I don't want it to over blend. So I'm really just using a little bit of paint. I see a lot of black around, around this um, bottom edge of this sky in through here. So I just picked up a little bit of black on my brush and I'm pulling it into that reflective area for the, the moon, something like that. I see some brown right here, so I'm picking up brown. I am not washing my brush throughout this process. I am just using a little bit on the tip of my brush and almost just scraping it across. I see blue here, so I'm gonna put blue down here. And again, I'm not gonna go too much farther down my canvas. And if you can still see some naked spots of your canvas in your water area right now, that's okay. Let it happen because we're gonna, again, we have another layer that we're gonna do. So at this point, you're just looking for a gentle kind of first coat on it. And that works for me. So I'm gonna be using the same brush for the next step. So I'm gonna wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our ground. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and the colors that I'm using are black, brown, green, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna be dotting like in a stippling type technique and I want it to just look like dirty, dark, underbelly kind of dark snow. <laughs> this is gonna be, we'll act as our shadows later. Whenever I'm doing these dimensional kind of night scenes, I definitely wanna have a nice dark base. And by using the green and the brown, that's gonna put the dirt and the, and the old grass in there too. So it really adds, for, adds a nice natural tone to it. And then the black and the white is gonna show gray, which will just make it look nice and neutral and unsaturated and in the shadows. So I'm gonna pick up all four colors. I've got, I've got brown, I've got green, I've got black, and I've got white all on my brush. And you can have like equal parts of each. It doesn't have to be anything, you know, exact. And then I'm just gonna start dotting in a chaotic kind of way. Now maybe I pick up some brown. Now maybe I pick up some black. Now maybe I pick up some white. And just keep dotting until you have the entire area called covered in. When you get up to where the, the land meets the water, just make it uneven. So you can have, it doesn't have to be a straight line. You can have almost like a little, seemingly like a little hill or something. And it doesn't have to be thick paint. This again is just acting as our primer coat or our base coat for the entire land area where our trees are gonna sit and where our snow is gonna sit. So it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just acting as a, a base coat for those particular um, things that we're gonna be painting on it later. And then once you've got this step all nice and done, we are going to be using this same brush for the next step so you can wash it and dry it. Get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are going to be finishing our sky. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush and I'm gonna be using the same colors that I did the first time. So I'm gonna be using white, blue, brown, and black. And I'm gonna go a little bit slower this time than I did on the first pass. I'm gonna be doing a very similar strategy to it, uh, I'm, but I'm gonna make my center of my moon brighter or whiter. I'm gonna have a little bit more of a 
kind of like a shadowy area around my moon. I want it to kind of look three-dimensional, but the clouds around it will have a, a light, wispy, grayish look to them. And then the rest of the sky, I'm not, you know, I'm just going to have a soft, out-of-focus sky. I might have a couple of little clouds floating in front of my, my moon as well. But I do want to forewarn you before you attempt to do this step that your sky is dry before you go on. Uh, so, you know, you could either take an extra long break if you want to, or you could blow on it, which might take you all day, or you could just whip out a blow dryer and blow dry it. But whatever way you need to do it, maybe yours is already dry by now, but let's make sure that it's dry. And let's see, what else? So as you're doing this, just know your moon doesn't have to be totally white, white, white. You can have it with specks of gray like craters or maybe yours turns out a little blue because there are blue moons, you know. So just be sure that if it turns a little different color that just know that it's okay. I'm going to have mine really glowing um, and white, but again, yours can be any shade of moon you'd like or have little pockets of craters and stuff. So I'm going to actually start with white paint on my brush and I don't have a lot of paint on my brush because I want to be able to control what's happening. So if I pick up a big huge scoop of paint, it's going to be tough to control where I want it and how it's going to dry and all that good stuff. So, so start with a little bit of paint and just add as you need. So I have a little bit of white on my brush. I'm going to start in the center of my moon, just making sure that I get it nice and as bright as I want it to be. And then as I work my way out towards the edges of the moon, I'm going to start incorporating maybe a little bit of blue and brown so I can almost get it to be three-dimensional around those edges. And again, if you have little spots of you know, gray or whatever in through there, that's totally cool. So a little bit of blue and, and maybe, I think I'm gonna go a little blue, black and brown on my brush all at the same time, just to give myself a nice complementary color around the edges. So I'm just kind of going around in the circle like that. I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my, on my paper towel, pick up a touch more white and come on the inside of that color ring that I just did and start to blend it into the moon itself. So this might take you a minute to kind of figure out how your brush is gonna work doing this step. My, because I'm using this nice bristle brush, it really is easy to kind of move that paint around as it's drying. So you might, again, might take you a minute or so to figure out how your brush is gonna work with it. You might even have to come back and do a second pass on the inside of the moon, but you know, just fiddle with it. Again, if it turns out a different color than mine, it's okay. It'll all work out in the long run. And then once you've got it as glowy as you feel you want it to be, then you start working your way out. So when I go to do the rest of the sky, I'm not terribly concerned if I put brown on top of brown or black on top of black or blue on top of blue. I'm really just concerned about doing another layer. So my head tells me still I want it dark around the bottom and the edges, but if I have a little bit of you know, blue on top of brown, it's just gonna add to the dimensional element of it. So I'm not washing my brush. I'm just gonna pick up those three colors, black, blue, and brown, just a little bit of each. And I'm gonna start my circular kind of motion. And I still have white on my brush from that center. So you're gonna to start to see this almost cloudy type smokiness to it, which is fantastic in a, in a night winter type sky. And then as I'm going, through this process, you're gonna see how soft and smooth that this ends up looking uh, on this second coat because we've already established a great base underneath it. So as we're going through this second, this second pass, it really just naturally is gonna be softer looking. So I am working my way kind of slowly around the moon. I wanna make sure that I have my transition around that moon the way that I want it. And then once I've got that in place, then I can really just cruise along the rest of the, of the painting. But I don't want there to be an edge like this. I'd rather it nice and soft like that. So I am just going to kind of 
wet my paint around this edge and just kind of work work them in together so they look like they belong they look like there's some nice atmospheric dimension along there and the beautiful thing about this is because we are doing a night moon lit sky we can have as many gentle clouds flowing floating by as we want so you you know if you have one area that ends up lighter than mine or darker than mine just roll with it that you meant to do that <laughs> so it, again it does not have to be exactly as mine and if you do something you don't like and it's not you're not able to correct it on the fly just let it dry for a minute and then you can come back to it and and put another layer on it but I've got that almost the way that I want it but I'm gonna work on this little corner here and maybe down here while this is drying a little bit so I can really tweak it and get it the way that I want. So I just keep picking up my black, my brown, my blue. Every now and again, I'll pick up a touch of white in order to get a little fluffy cloud to, to float by or to help get better coverage on a particular area. So the white will help to make your paint less see-through. So you can certainly just keep tweaking as you see fit and if you bump into your water at when you're down here don't worry about that because we're going to hit that horizon line one more time so you just keep cruising along with this second layer get it as soft or as dramatic as you want it's totally up to you maybe you want yours to be even more on that midnight side and you want yours to be really really dark maybe you're going to put snow or stars or something in your sky so maybe you want yours to be much darker than mine but just have fun with it i mean you can have it whatever tonal value you want you can have it super dark or super light you know but i'm i'm enjoying getting a little bit of these clouds to kind of flip. I think I'm going to have one right in here because I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like there should be just this little cloud just floating by. Maybe, maybe we've got one or two. I'm just using the remnants on my brush right now to get these little, little fluffy things to just make their way past my moon. Sometimes when you feel something, you just got to do it. So I'm using just the remnants on my brush to get these little delicate clouds to pass by my moon maybe i've got one up and through here and you can also use these little clouds to hide any of your moon edges that might not have come out exactly as you wanted them to <laughs> so just have fun with it and make it whatever you want it to be and just kind of keep layering these these clouds or these colors on top of one another until you've got it as soft as you want it maybe you you want yours uber you know just one solid layer at, or one solid color with just that moon popping in that center so have fun with it make it again as dramatic or as soft as you want it to be I'm thinking that's looking pretty good and when you have your sky as gentle or as dramatic as you want it to be we are going to be using the same brush and you can see how i've got almost my clouds are glowy right around the moon um because the moon made them do that <laughs> but once you've got your sky the way that you want you can take this brush and wash it and dry it and just get ready for the next step Okay, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing our water. I'm gonna be using my large brush and I'm gonna be using the same colors that I used the first time, which are white, brown, blue, and black. And really, I'm just putting another layer on it. Uh, I do wanna make sure that I have a nice, evident reflection of the moon. So I'm gonna have it almost casting a bright glow at the top of my waterline and then of course I've got it going diagonally but I'm going to have it a little bit wider at the top and make it more narrow as it goes um, towards my land so that's where I'm going to start I'm going to start with a little bit of white on my brush and I'm going to make sure that I have it really nice and bright up towards this horizon line and as I'm doing this, again, I'm, hard, I'm not using a lot of paint because I want to be able to control this. And you might find that you 
maybe your water looks awesome right now and you don't feel that you need to do any adjusting to it. But I know that when I did my second layer of my sky, my colors shifted a little bit. And I also know that adding a second layer to anything makes it look better. <laughs> so that's why I am gonna make a second layer on this. So you can certainly, of course, use your own discretion as you do this. And now that I've got my second layer on that reflection part, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start working my way away from it. And in order for this reflection to pop out the most and be the most evident, you need high contrast with the colors next to it. So if I was to just go white to light blue, you might not see the effect of it so much. So I'm definitely gonna utilize the darker tones next to that moon a little, or the reflection of the moon a little bit. So that will help to make the reflection pop out even more. And as you're doing this, you know, you want to watch the color shifts in the sky above it just to make sure, you know, if you've got a ton of brown here that you've got some brown down in the water just to make sure that it really reads as a reflection from that sky. And maybe, you know, as you're doing this, you can just imagine all of the wild animals that this moon maybe waking up right now maybe the all the winter owls and the winter wolves and stuff are coming out and they're getting ready to play in the snow while everybody else is sleeping so I, they're they're using that moon as their as their night light to their to their night life activities so you can imagine yours in whatever fun imaginative way you would like to but that's where my head goes to when I'm doing stuff like this so have fun with it I think I'm gonna pull this a little bit further and you can see I'm going much slower I'm pulling these colors into the white area which is that center area I've got some deeper darker colors up in through here so I want to make sure those translate down into that water but I don't want to lose my water's edge so I'm consciously leaving that a little bit brighter so that way you can certainly see it from afar and make sure that you know you don't lose it with that sky so again you can have fun with this keep tweaking it as much as you want to I see a lot of blue around the edge of my moon so I definitely this is the center area is the reflection of the moon so I want to make sure that I've got some of that blue translated in this reflection here right next to it. There's gray on this side. So again, I'm just watching above. If whatever color is next to the moon, that's what I'm putting next to the moon. And once you've got this step all nice and done, we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So you can wash it and dry it. I think that looks good. And get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the first layer of our pine trees. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and the colors that I'm using are black, green, and brown. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna have all of my trees different heights. I'm gonna have maybe one's gonna be in front of another one. You can really position yours whichever way that you want. Just know that if you're gonna be incorporating the sleigh going across the sky that you definitely wanna save room for it. So how I'm gonna do this is first I'm gonna put some what I refer to as place markers into place. So I'm gonna take my big brush and I'm just putting black paint on my brush. And I call them place markers, but you might wanna call them tree trunks. <laughs> but on pine trees, I never see the tree trunks. So these are just gonna be my place markers. So how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna have a little baby one that's gonna be directly below like the right side of my moon and it's gonna come just out into my sky a little bit. So really what I'm doing is I'm just going to be making myself a line. And if you run through wet paint, don't worry about it. This is just giving us a, an idea of where we're gonna have our trees in a minute. 
So that was my first one. And I had to do that one first because depending on the size of your moon, you might need to put this next one in a different spot than I'm putting. So I'm gonna put this next one at the left side of the top of it. it's gonna be at the left side of my moon and it's gonna be about a third of the way down. And I, again, I'm just drawing a line at this point and I'm gonna have this one come down maybe to about the same um, height as this one, maybe a little bit lower, it doesn't really matter, somewhere in through there. Then I'm gonna do a, another one that's gonna be way over on the right-hand side of my canvas that's gonna come uh, maybe about an inch or two away from the top of my canvas, and it's gonna go all the way down to the bottom. So something in through here, and just bring it all the way down to the bottom of the canvas. And then I'm gonna have another one that's gonna be, I would say, almost halfway between the edge of your moon and, and this, tree trunk here, so maybe somewhere around here, eh, maybe a little bit to the right, and I'm gonna have this one just a little bit taller than this one. So however tall this one is, I'm gonna make it just a little bit taller, and when I come down, I'm gonna come down just to the edge of my, of my water, so something like that. And again, these are where I'm placing mine. You can certainly place yours wherever you want. So now what I'm gonna start doing is painting in my my branches, so to speak, or my, I, so they're branches slash pine needles. <laughs> so I'm gonna have mine, the, the generic shape of each tree is like a triangle, but I don't want it to just be a perfect triangle. It's gonna be skinny at the top and wider at the bottom, but my trees might have a little bit of a wiggle to them. They might have a little bit of a bend. One side might lean over a little bit more. My main goal here is just to have uneven edges to it. So I do my edges first, the, the left and right and the bottom, and then I just am gonna be dotting in the middle. So I'm gonna, right now I have black paint on my brush. I'm gonna pick up black, brown, and a little bit of green to do my edges and then when I go to do the center I'll just alternate those colors. So I want this to look like a pine tree so the main identity of the pine tree is going to be nice and pointy at the top. When pine, these type of pine trees have snow on them they, the uh, branches get weighted down which is why they look nice and wintry like triangles. And as I do this I'm going to be using like the edge of my brush and I'm going to make uneven little needles kind of coming out. I don't want my trees to be too, too wide. So as I'm doing this, I'm just kind of tapping the edge of my, of my brush to get uh, an outline or kind of like a little profile. And it doesn't just have to be green. Uh, again, I'm using my, my three colors, green, brown, and black. And I, when I go to pick them up, I just alternate those, those colors. And then down at the bottom, I just want it to be messy. So I'm just gonna kind of dot in a messy edge to it. And then on the inside of it, I really just need to do polka dots. It doesn't need to be anything perfect on the inside. You just wanna hide that trunk. I just am trying not to over blend. I don't want it all to just be one color. So as I'm, as I'm doing these dots on the inside, I don't stay in one spot and dot a thousand times in that one spot because all of these colors would just merge together and turn into one color. So because I'm alternating my colors and I'm not over blending, you can see I've got some light spots and dark spots. And if you can see through little peekaboo spots, that's great, that's gonna make it look more natural. So I'm gonna go right ahead to my next tree. So this one again is gonna be nice and pointy up at the top. And then I'm just gonna kinda, this is a littler one. I might, I might get most of these branches when I do the outline. So again, I'm just kinda using the edge of my brush and I don't like it to look systematic. So that's when you'll see I have different length br um, branches as I go through. And then I've just got a little bit on the inside to, to finish up for that one. And we're gonna have a whole bunch of snow on these. So don't worry if they don't look super perfect right now. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do this one in through here. I know that this one's probably gonna overlap this edge a little bit. So just, you know, know that that's probably gonna happen. So again, I'm just 
starting up at the top. I like mine to be pretty skinny, uh, especially up at the top. And then as I'm coming down here, I, you know, they can come off at different angles. You can have them really just as fun as you want them to be. I, of course, am not making mine super wide because I want that other one to, to have some space too. And I want to be able to see a lot of my sky too. So I'm just kind of giving these a messy edge in through here. Then I'm going to just start dotting as dotting up. That's a little bit too black right now for me. So I just picked up some more green to make sure that green gets represented in this, in this color. And again, brown, green, and black are my colors. But you know, you might find one area is going to be more bright than the other. You know, so that's that's what this is intended to do. I just like to have my my trees in nice organic shapes here. So I'm picking up some more brown to get this one over here or black to get this one over here. And you might not even you know, it might be tough to detect some of these branches on this dark background. But once you've got the snow on them that we're going to be putting later, then you'll be able to start to see them. And I think this is where this one's going to start to overlap on in front of this one. And that's totally okay. If it begins to get a little bit too confusing for you at this point with that overlap, just, you know, merge them together. And then when we go to do the snow, I'll give you a couple of pointers on how to get them to be uh, visibly different from one another. And then this is just going off the side. So I don't even need to do anything on that side. So I'm just going to take the remnants on my brush, start to dot away, get picking up a little bit more black in through here. And then in a second, I'm going to pick up some green, get that green to, to be evident. And again, it doesn't have to be anything perfect right now. We're just getting this base coat on here. And then let's see, what are we going to do for the next step? We're actually going to be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your pine trees percolating and started here, you can wash and dry this big brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're putting the snow on our ground. So I'm gonna be using my big brush. I'm gonna be using mostly white, but I'll also use probably a little bit of black and a little bit of brown. And if you're wild and crazy, you could also use a little bit of blue. But predominantly, I'm gonna be using white. And if I use other colors, I'll call them out as I use them. So I really want the top of my land to be the lightest. So that's where I'm going to start. And I've got a good amount of white on my brush. When you're doing this, you've obviously got to contend with your trees. We'll be putting shadows behind the trees later. So don't worry about leaving those dark right now. And if you accidentally bump into a couple of your um, branches, don't worry about that either because we've got snow to put on your branches too. So I want this to look like fluffy fluffy snow. So I'm going to be putting these really heavy spots. The beautiful thing with acrylic paint is the, th the thicker it is, the truer to the color it is and the less you can see through it. So if I have a thick area of white, it's going to be really white. If I have a thin area of white, it's going to take on some of the color underneath, which is going to give me varying shades of the snow, which is going to make it look really natural. So I'm going to put a bunch up at the top of it being thick. And then as I work my way down into the back area of the the land, I'm going to use less. So I could even just wipe my brush off on my paper towel and use the remnants that are on there and just kind of start wiggling my brush a little bit. So something like this. And because we have those beautiful natural tones underneath that we've already laid in, it's just going to make it look like fluffy snow that has these dips here and there that have, you know, maybe little piles of snow have drifted up from whatever this water is. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a lake, maybe it's a pond, who knows what it is. You know, you can imagine it to be whatever, whatever you'd like it to be. And then I might not even need any other colors, but if you find that you've covered up 
you, you, a lot of your original tones and you feel like you want to bring back some of that natural, those natural tones, you can certainly pick up a little bit of black or a little bit of brown or even a touch of green and get, you know, those lighter or those darker natural tones in wherever you want to. And I'm really just wiggling my brush so that way it provides me with an, or, or, an organic type of formation on the snow. If I sit here and think, okay, I really want this soft snow, I will end up with something that doesn't look natural. It'll just look manufactured and that I just, you know, told this snow to be a big pile there, you know? So I like mine to look like there's drifts or, you know, it's been piled up here or there or everywhere and that's looking pretty cool to me. So I am going to be going on to the next step. I'm gonna be using my small brush for the next step. So once you've got your snow on your ground, you can put the large brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting Santa's sleigh. I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna be using black and white paint. So for me, how I'm gonna do this is I want it to look like Santa's coming out from behind this tree and his reindeer are just going way off into the distance. So I'm gonna have his sled coming out from behind this tree. Now, the sled I'm making is out of my imagination. It is a whimsical kind of sled. You can certainly form yours whatever way you want. You just need to have enough room in your sleigh for a big bag of toys and perhaps Santa or an elf just steering the, the sleigh. So have fun with it. I'm gonna just give you my generic interpretation of what his sleigh would look like, even though there's lots of renditions of what it would look like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my small brush, I'm actually gonna water down a little bit of my black, so it's almost like an ink consistency. So just a little bit of water in my black paint makes it nice and thin. And I can always add more, but keeping it on the thinner side when I start helps me. And of course, you could always use a pencil and draw an outline first if you wanted to, but I'm just one of those go for it kind of artists. So I'm gonna have it coming out here. So I'm gonna start with like a little swirly kind of mark like this for the front part of his um, ski part, I guess, is the ski part of the sled and I'm just gonna make it go back behind that tree, something like this. And then I'm gonna have the sled part. I want maybe the top part of it to be hiding behind the tree and we'll put snow on the edges of the tree so it will, it'll, you'll see the separation, but I'm gonna have this kind of coming out like this and it's gonna come along the base of that of that ski part and then a little bit before i get to this curly cue i want it to come up for the front part of the sled but my front part is going to be lower than my back part so maybe i can start something like that and then i'm going to have this little part where his his body is gonna go somewhere in through here. So this is gonna be the front part of the slid. And let's see, it's gonna come over like this and come up behind that tree in through there. So something like that is gonna be my generic shape for the base part of it. I do need another ski or another little sled part coming out the other side. So I'm gonna do that in a second here. And then we're gonna put little uh, highlights. Hold on, let me just make this a little bit bigger. Yeah, that looks good. And then uh, the one on the other side is gonna be smaller than this one, so it looks like it's farther away. So maybe something like that. And then it comes out this back side, and just at the same, a similar angle. I need to connect my sled to my ski. So I'm just gonna put a couple of little, almost like a V going in through here and here. 
And now once I have that shape, really what I need to do is put a highlight on the side that is closest to the moon. So you can wash your brush if you want to or just wipe it on your paper towel and pick up some white paint. The black is probably still gonna be wet, which will benefit you. It'll give it a nice, uh, almost blended kind of highlight. And I'm gonna put a little highlight on all the pieces that are closest to the moon. So for me, I've got a little highlight here. I've got a little one here, 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 here. Maybe a little bit at the bottom of the ski something like this. I think I just ran my hand through some wet black paint somewhere. <laughs> Whatever you do on this ski, you gotta kind of do on the other one, something like that. And I got a little bit on the front of my sled like this. So you can bring it into the sled a little bit. If you want the sled to look like it's a little round, you can totally do that. I'm gonna put a little bit on the edge of here because this is the side that's closest to the to the moon and if you don't want it so bright you can certainly add a little bit of black back to it and yeah, that's looking pretty good and I think maybe just a little bit on the top of this section here and then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step so once you've got your cool Santa sleigh on here you can wash and dry the same brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are putting our big bag of presents in our sleigh as well as Santa. So I'm gonna do my bag first. I'm gonna be using my small brush and the colors that I'm using are black, brown, and white. So how I'm gonna do this, is I'm gonna just use uh, black to give myself a little bit of an outline for the bag itself. So I really want this to be like an overstuffed, big, huge bag. It's gonna be way bigger than Santa is, so it's gonna take up a lot of, a lot of room. So I'm gonna bring it almost to the front of my sleigh, so somewhere around here, and it's just going to be way taller than my actual sled itself. It's gonna be bumpy along the edges and maybe at the top I've got this big part that's cinched at the top. And I'm gonna color it in with a very thin layer of black paint. I don't want it to be really thick because I want it to dry pretty quickly for me. So I'm bringing it right up to the edge of my of my sleigh itself and I'm actually going to have it kind of disappear behind this tree as well so I really just want it to be a big huge bag of toys like this this is all he's going to need to bring he's got every toy for every little kid in this one bag <laughs> so it's as big as it can can be in the sleigh so I've got that on there and now while that's drying for a second I'm going to go ahead and put Santa silhouette now, I'm not terribly concerned if this ends up looking exactly like Santa or like an elf or, you know, I don't know, like a doll or something, I don't know, or a bear or something. I really, the things that I want it to, if you want it to look like Santa, the biggest thing is you got to try and give it a, a big, a belly and a beard if you can and some hat with a with a pom-pom on the end that's going to give the illusion that it's Santa Claus but if it doesn't end up like that then it's just an elf the elf is helping out for the moment so how I'm going to do this is I'm going to just build it I don't want it as tall as my as my present I do need him to have arms that are going to be steering the the strings so I know I need my arm right about here so that's kind of where my starting point is going to be so I'm just going to kind of put a little bit of a, a of a stick kind of finger <laughs> in through there maybe bump it up at the end like there's a little mitten or something on there and then I'm going to put the the arm connects to the shoulder so there that's where my shoulder is going to be so I can do a little bump in through here and wherever it lands on your present, it lands on your present. Then I'm gonna put a little bit of a, of a belly. So I've got a little bump right there for the belly. 
And then I'm just gonna ride this down to my sleigh. That's gonna be his legs. And I'm gonna keep a tiny space between my bag and my Santa so I don't lose my bag edge. We're gonna be putting a highlight on the bag in a second, but just for me personally, so I don't lose it in my head, I've left a little tiny space there. Now I need his, his head and his hat. So I'm gonna just put a little kind of circle-y area in through here. I'm gonna put a little bump at the bottom to indicate that there's a beard, a little nose, and then I'm gonna put a, a hat, something like this. It's gonna be up like this, and it's gonna have a little ball on the end, something like that. And of course, yours might end up way different shaped than mine. Mine is kind of cute, but it might end up a little bit different by the time I'm done. We just make people think that it's Santa. <laughs> and then I'm just putting, I didn't wash my brush, I'm putting white and brown on my brush. And I'm gonna put a highlight on the left-hand side in a carefree kind of manner on my, on my bag, on my toy bag because I want it to look all rump, rumply and bumpy and stuff. So I'm really just putting white and brown on my brush and then just wiggling it to the right. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna make my bag look all bumpy. And like there's a whole bunch of toys and stuff inside of there. And I'm gonna put a little highlight up at, up at the top with the cinched part. And I'm using brown and white, you might find that you wanna use a different color. Maybe you want your bag to be red or something. So you can totally have it whatever intensity of a color you want. Now I'm gonna put my highlights on Santa. So the stuff that is near the moon. So I've got a little highlight on his belly. I've got a little highlight maybe at the bottom of his mittens, something like that. Maybe a little highlight on his, oh, that's a big one. Let's put some black back there. <laughs> we can really see his beard now. So just along the edge. And again, these are just tiny little details. So maybe a little on his nose, maybe a little on his hat. So just have fun with where you want these highlights to go. I, and of course, if you make them too much, just bring back the black a little bit. I think I want a little more highlight on my sleigh top here so you can see the difference. And I think I think that's all I'm gonna do for him. You don't really, oh, maybe a little white on the pom-pom part, something like that. So you can see that it's got a little highlight and it kind of helps to tell the form shape of it. That's gonna work for me. So we're gonna use this small brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're putting our reins in place. So. I'm doing it in this manner because this is going to, in essence, kind of give you a roadmap to where you put, where you can place your deer, so or your reindeer. So I am going to be using my small brush. I'm going to be using watered down black paint. So again, take your small brush and just add a little bit of water into your black paint. And I am going to have my reins come from my Santa mittens, and they're going to come in a wiggly way, because I want it to look like these reindeer are just dancing and they're prancing and all throughout the sky and they're just having fun. And they're, maybe the, the sleigh is, you know, going from side to side and they're just leading the way in a, in a fun, festive way. So when I go to do these, I'm gonna have my reins kind of coming in through here. They're gonna go dip down in front of my moon a little bit and then they're gonna kind of trail off into the distance. So when I do this, I took my brush and I spun it on the side of my palette in my paint. So my brush is really pointy. I have a shaky hand. So I'm going to brace myself by pressing my hand on my canvas. And when I do this, I'm not gonna push my brush hard into the canvas. So I'm gonna start at my hand and I'm gonna probably go slow and I might not talk while I do this because I have a tendency to push hard, so I'm gonna try not to. But again, I'm gonna come across here and then I'm gonna dip down in front of my moon and come back up, but not in a perfect line. So here we go, I'm gonna go something like this. I'm gonna come over into this direction and I'm gonna kind of dip down in front of my moon 
something like this and then come back up and trail off. Now I'm gonna do another one next to it, but in some spots I might cross over it. So if I come out in through here, maybe I cross over here, maybe I cross over here. So they're gonna, you know, look just fun and disorganized and they're just enjoying the, the, the winter way that is happening. So I'm gonna start in through here. Maybe I cross over in through here and you can see they're just wiggly. There's nothing, nothing about them that's perfect. And then it's just gonna trail right off. So now that we have these two reins, we are gonna use a small brush for the next step. So once you've got them in place, just wash and dry. Well, you don't even have to, just take a break because we're gonna use the same color. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the head and the bodies to our reindeer. So I'm gonna take you through these animals in little steps. We're gonna, you know, the next step might be the legs or the antlers or something, but I wanna take you in little steps so we don't get lost throughout the process because <laughs> there's a lot of reindeer to get to and I wanna make sure that we have a, a clean thought as we're doing them all. So again, I'm using my small brush, I'm using my black paint. Um, and how I'm going to do this is I'm going to tackle each one as if it's getting farther away from us. So my biggest one is going to be the one closest to my Santa. Now, the story tells me that there are eight reindeer and then Rudolph in the front. So I am not going to be painting all eight. I'm going to be painting four silhouettes of the main reindeer and um, and Rudolph. And we'll just let the viewer imagine that the second one is just exactly behind the first one. Because <laughs> it'd be a little difficult to put two next to each other, but if you want to, you're more than welcome to. But I'm, I'm gonna go with the simplistic way of maybe they're both just exactly next to each other. So we're just seeing one. So how I'm gonna do this, we're gonna do heads and bodies. And the head is going to be kind of a tipped upside down soft triangle and you'll see what I mean in a second. They're going to be bigger here and they're going to get smaller as we go. So the reins are going to be towards the neck of each of each reindeer. So I'm going to put my first head is going to be in through this area. I'm going to do like a little circle and then I'm going to bring the muzzle part of the reindeer down like that. And then I'm going to bring the neck part down like this. And then I need a body. So the body is going to be, the butt comes, is like a little bubble butt, something like that. And then it comes down and meets the front chest area, something like this. And based on the angle of the, of the reindeer, they may all look a little bit different. Yours might be longer or, or healthier than mine. They, they're all gonna be different shapes and at different angles. So as long as we can kind of get them going in a similar way for each one, then that's gonna make them look like they belong together. So that's gonna be my first one. My second one I'm gonna have right about here. It's gonna be smaller than that one. And maybe I have it at a little bit different of an angle. So I'm gonna start my circle there and then maybe this head goes down a little bit more like that. And then I'm gonna put my neck area. They almost start to look like swans initially, but once we get the legs and the antlers and all that good stuff on there, they'll look a lot less like swans or ducks or something. And then this one's got the bubble butt, something like this. And then I bring it back around in through here. And again, yours might end up bigger or smaller than mine. Maybe this one's gonna have a little bit longer of a body. And you can continue to tweak them. Once we put the legs on, you might find that you wanna tweak yours a little bit more or a little, you know, make them bigger or smaller. They, they do look kind of like little ducks or something right now. All right, so then this one, I think I'm gonna have this little head is gonna be 
maybe up a little bit and I'm consciously trying to make it a little bit smaller than this one so if I you know made it bigger or whatever then I can certainly make that you know I can just progressively keep making them bigger as they as they go back it's tough to make them smaller you can always make them bigger but it's really tough to make them smaller this one's got a little bubble butt and then something like that and you know you might want yours longer than mine more slender yours you maybe you want yours to look like they're dancing or whatever just have fun with this there's you know nobody's gonna be telling you what size your reindeer should be just have fun with the the whole process so something like this bring it like this bring it down here with the bubble butt and again maybe yours end up you know a little bit different size than mine and then I've got Rudolph right in the front here so he's gonna be super tiny he's going off in in a fun direction he's leading the pack so he's gonna be something like this his little bubble butt back here and then we're gonna use the same brush for the next step so once you've got all of your cute little reindeer heads and bodies on you don't have to wash the brush, just kind of take a little break. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the legs on the deers. I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna be using black paint. So all of these legs can come out at different directions if you want to, but the main thought is where the where the joints or the elbows or the knuckle kind of things are and if you want to put hoofs you can so the back legs have these big thighs and then there is a almost a knee halfway down the leg and then it goes a little ways and then there's a hoof so that's kind of the same thing for each of the the back legs and you can have just one or have two showing and then the front legs they have um, like a shouldery part and then halfway down is where the leg bends and it bends like the opposite way that a human does. It bends going towards the back way. So that's where you see them like prancing and stuff and they like, it looks like their leg is bent in the middle of the leg. So I'm going to use that thought process as I build the legs on here. So you don't have to build your legs exactly as mine are. But if you have that same thought process as to where these knuckles or these joints are, that's going to help you to naturally just build it in, in the, the correct way. So I'm going to start with my biggest one back here and I'll do the back leg first. And I want these to kind of look like they're running or yeah, running through the air. <laughs> that's totally what they're doing. They're running and dancing through the air. So the, th the back thigh is gonna start about a third of the way into the body, so something like this. And it's gotta naturally meet with that butt, so something like that. And then I've got a the front part or the bottom part of the leg, something like that, and then you can put a little hoof on the bottom of it. So as far as ratio goes, how long or how short it is, proportionately, you just don't, it, you don't want it to be way longer than the body itself or way shorter. So maybe about a similar length of the body, that might be a good, good ratio. And then so my front one, I think I'm going to have one leg maybe coming straight out like this and maybe maybe this one just goes all the way to the hoof maybe this one is kind of straight out and maybe I have the other one bending something like this you know and you'll you'll find your groove maybe you want yours exactly like mine or a little bit different however it looks proportionately accurate to you is totally fine. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start my second one. And if you wanted a second foot or, uh, you know, there to look like there's a second one out here, you could certainly just 
put another little foot out there. It's it really whatever is visually working for you. Sometimes these back legs, you'd only see one of them just based on the angle. This one's gonna be kind of flying through the air a little bit more, so I think I'm gonna have this one something like this. And then that other foot, oh, maybe this one's gonna hide behind that one. Yeah, I don't have to put a foot on that one. That one's all, all hiding on me, all right? So I think the front legs on this one, maybe I'll have these ones coming out like this. Maybe it comes back like this. Maybe these ones are gonna be together. Maybe I'll have those two just looking yeah, that works. They'll just, they're just kind of coming out at the same angle on that one. And then this little guy here, maybe I'll have this thigh coming out here with a little foot there. And then maybe, maybe I'll have another one coming in front. Yeah, maybe this will be this, this side. Something like that. And again, yours might come out way different than mine. Mine are not even perfect. I'm just having a good time and enjoying the process. And then let's see, I gotta, I gotta reposition my body here. Uh, maybe this one comes out in this direction a little bit. And again, I'm just really trying not to make them too big or disproportionate. Maybe this one's got a little cute prancy one right here like that. Oh, my brush just just smudged a little bit. Let me correct that really quick. It's, it happens when you're doing these little tiny things. You just got to go slow and steady and sometimes when you when you're not paying attention, there we go. That works. Looks like he's got a little shoe on now. It's okay. There, that works. All right. And I'm going to do this one here. So this one, I think I'm gonna have him really stretching out his, his back leg here. Going something like this. And putting that little, well, that's a big hoof. Gonna, we're gonna water down that one a little bit. And again, this, this is part of the process, you know, you're, you're kind of making a commitment with the black but maybe it just gets a little bit bigger or smaller as you go, no big deal. And then I think I'm gonna have this fun, another little prancer one out here, something like this. And then I'm gonna have maybe one coming out like this. And again, I'm just kind of making them go where I think that they, they're looking good, like all the hooves and stuff are going in different directions, and maybe my little Rudolph here, he's, he's going all the way up into the sky. So I'm gonna have this one coming back in through here and maybe a little tiny leg right there. He's gonna have to, he's leading the way. He's leading the way. We all gotta follow Mr. Rudolph, something like that. Maybe he's got another one out here. I'm not sure I like that front one, but I don't like that front one. <laughs> so bye-bye front leg. <laughs> um, that's the magic of acrylic. Just add a little bit of water. We can totally get rid of it. So I got rid of that one. I like the, just the two that are on there. <laughs> so we're going to use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your cute little legs on your, on your reindeer, you can, and we're using the same color. So just take another little break. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing ears, antlers, and tails. <laughs> so I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna be using a black paint, like I did on every other step for our cute reindeer. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do my tails first. These are just gonna be these cute little um, stick up kind of tails in the appropriate spot. There's different kind of tails on deer, so you can certainly have fun with however you want yours to look. I'm just making mine a little pointy at the end, or at least attempting to, and making them a little bit smaller as I go towards my, um, my Rudolph. And then I'm gonna put a couple of little ears kind of near the back of the top of the head, 
And maybe you just do one ear or two ears, whatever you think visually works. Most of it would just work with just one ear. So I'm just doing almost like the same thing I did for the tail, for the ear. And now I'm gonna do antlers. So I, in my, in my um, research, Rudolph does not have antlers, but if you'd like to put antlers on them, you're more than welcome to. So I'm gonna put antlers on all of my other deer and they can come out in varying spots of the, of the forehead. So have fun with this. Maybe you want there to be one set or like see one side of it or both sides. So really just have some fun. Think of it almost like branches as you're, as you're creating these, you can have them coming, you know, off into this direction and you can have, I think they're called points on a, on an antler rack. So you can have as many points coming off as you want for each side. So, you know, have maybe it's different for reindeer versus regular deer, but you know, just enjoy the process. Get your, your antlers to be as full as you want, as decorative as you want. I just wanna make sure that I spin my brush so I have a nice pointy brush as I go through this process. And sometimes, again, that water on your brush is going to help you with getting these nice and skinny, at least as you're building it. And then if you need that um, paint to be less see-through, then you can do a second coat on it. But just to, when you're working with these tiny details, you might even need to use a smaller brush, but whatever whatever works to get them on there. And then, oh, I almost just put some on, on Rudolph here. Uh, once you get that done, we're going to use the same brush for the next step, but you, you will want to wash it and dry it for the next step. So just get ready. Okay, so what we're doing for the next step is we are doing highlights on our deers and Rudolph's nose. So I'm putting them in one step because we want to put a white glowy area underneath where his red nose is going to go. So I'm going to use my small brush and I'm using white paint. So I've got not a lot of white paint on my brush. I wanna be able to control how much I have. And I'm gonna put a glowy area. You can make it as big as you want. It has to be pretty darn vibrant, especially where it touches his face in order for the red paint that we're gonna put on later to be very evident on your painting. If you go too subtle, the viewer might not detect or be able to see it. So go bold, you know, put, I'm, I'm using a, a very little bit of paint, but I'm definitely gonna make this area glow bright. So I'm putting it very bright where it touches his nose. And then I'm almost fading that white paint off into the surrounding area. So it's almost like it's casting this really cool glow in front of him. And I'm just rubbing that paint out uh, into the surrounding areas. And while that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to be putting my highlight on the rest of my reindeer. So I'm using white paint, I'm using my small brush, and I'm doing the same type of a highlight that I did on my Santa sleigh, which is I'm gonna add white on the side that's closest to the moon. So on any, on any of the objects. So if I want a highlight on the leg, I'm gonna just put a little white line in through there. So if I want a little bit on the belly, a little bit on the chest, whatever, this leg might be in front, so I can add that little highlight there. And this is a good um, step to minimize any areas that you might have painted a little bit too big. <laughs> so I'm gonna put a little bit on that muzzle, maybe a little bit on the antlers on the side that I think is gonna be the side of the moon. So something like that. And you could, again, have this as bright as you want or as subtle as you want, totally up to you. And I'm just gonna kind of keep cruising along here. Uh, the deer on the right side of the moon are gonna get the highlights on the bottom and the left side of their of the objects 
on their on their face and their antlers and stuff and the deer on the left side of the moon are going to get it on the opposing side so if you can just kind of in your head always you know think of where is that moon and that's where the light source is so that's where it's creating the glow here I, you might not even see it around him because this is white so you probably wouldn't see much at all maybe a little bit in the antlers and again i'm just adding these little pops of white to show that the moon is illuminating them and now as i'm getting towards this deer here i'm going to start putting them on the right side i might have said it backwards but <laughs> the deer on the right get the highlight on the left and the deer on the left get the highlight on the right <laughs> sometimes i say things backwards so if i did that i'm so sorry and then I'm just adding this little pop of this white in through here. My, my Rudolph is going to get a highlight on his bum because that's the side that's the closest to the moon. And on the back of these legs, maybe something here and here, maybe even on the back of his head and his little ear. And then I'm going to... That looks good for the highlight, so I'm just going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel or wash it. If yours is overloaded, you could wash it. I'm looking to make sure my white glow is dry, and it is. So now I get to add my little Rudolph nose. So I'm just adding a touch of red right where it's supposed to go, right uh, in front of his nose. And I'm going to let that glow a little bit. So the same thing that I did with the white. I'm going to just pull this red out just a itty bitty bitty bit. I want it to look like it's glowing and that it is illuminating the magical winter way for Santa and his sleigh. Ooh, I just rhymed a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> My head has fun every now and again. Okay, I think that's good for that step. So we're going to use our large brush for the next step. So after you've got your highlight on your reindeer and your, and your bright nose, you can wash and dry your large brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the shadow behind these trees. So I'm gonna use my large brush and I'm gonna be using mostly black, but I might use a little bit of white too. The idea here is I just really wanna darken the ground below these trees to create a shadow, but I don't necessarily need it 100% black. So I'm gonna start with just a little bit of black on my brush as like a dry brush technique, but if it goes too dark on me, I might bring back some of the, um, a little gray or something. So the shadow is being directed by the light source. The light source is here. You want your shadow to go in the direction of that light source. So this tree shadow is gonna go in this direction. So I have a little bit of black on my brush and I'm gonna just rub it in at the bottom of that tree and just bring it in this direction. And mine's working out pretty good. It's not going too black on me. So that's making me, that's making me pretty happy. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. So my light source is here. So it's gonna be a little bit at an angle. So I'm gonna put a touch of black in through there and then I'm gonna just move my shadow out a little bit to the right, not much, but a little bit. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this one here. So I've got a little bit of black on my brush and this one of course is just gonna kinda of hide right behind this tree. And then I think I am gonna pick up just a tiny bit of white to make sure the snow looks like it it works with that shadow. So I didn't wash my brush, I just picked up a teeny tiny bit of white just to make sure that you've got a little bit of that snow on top so it's not just a flat flat shadow so that works for me and we are going to be using this same brush for the next step so once you've got your shadows behind your tree you can wash and dry that large brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we are putting the snow on our trees we're going to be using the large brush and the colors that I'm using are black, brown, and white. So how I'm gonna do this, I want this snow to have dimension to it, 
and I want my trees to have dimension to it. So if I just put a whole bunch of white snow on it, it's gonna look a little flat. So the back side of these trees is in the shadow, so the snow would also be in the shadow. So I'm gonna make myself a shadowed snow color, which is gonna be black, brown, and white. So I'm gonna take a little bit of black, I'm gonna take a little bit of brown, and I'm gonna take a little bit of white, I'm gonna mix it all together, and that's gonna be my shadow snow color. So I'm going to be using, so just kind of a medium, kind of brownish gray, and I'm gonna use that. And if you wanted yours to be on the cooler side, if you really wanted it to look, read as more cold, you could use blue too. So if you wanted to make yourself a bluish gray, that's totally fine. Just something that's not white and looks like it could be snow in the shadow would totally work. So once I've got whatever I want for my grayish color, I'm gonna wipe my brush off on, my, on the side of my palette so I don't have too much on there. And I'm in essence going to do snow all around the tree with this color. And the snow is going to be dotted in in a similar way that I did the exterior edges of that tree. So I'm almost using my brush in a, in a diagonal type fashion to get this shadowed snow on here. I don't want to cover the tree 100%. I want to make sure you still see pops of that green under there, pops of the black, pops of the, you know, if there was brown under there. I'm, I'm going to do some down here as it's hitting the ground as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the next tree. And Again, I'm not covering it 100%. I'm really just using the edge of my, of my brush or the side of my brush. And this, this toned down or darkened white is gonna really make this look three-dimensional by the time you're done. And if you want a little branch where you didn't have one before, go for it, put it on there. But I'm almost done here. I got two more. This one's gonna get a little confusing because they're overlapping. So I'm gonna do this one first. And again, I don't need to cover the whole tree 100%. The trick is to make it look nice and natural. So for me, using these wider kind of flatter brushes as opposed to like a fan brush or something like that, this to me makes it look a little bit more natural because it's more of an organic kind of brush mark. It's not systematic. So it really can give you these great textural effects, but you do want to make sure that you have some down the center of that tree. Sometimes when you're doing this, you te we tend to go just to the left and just to the right, but we definitely want to have a little bit down that center. Now I'm going to go ahead and do this tree over here, and this one's going to overlap my my snow machine or my snowmobile sleigh thing that my, that my Santa's riding on. And if you push in different intensities, sometimes you push lighter, sometimes you push harder, that's gonna give you different brush marks and that too will look nice and, and very organic and natural. And then once I've got this darker back snow color on, this shadowed snow color, I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm just gonna pick up some white and I'm gonna add the highlighted snow on the side that the moon is, cause that's the side that you're gonna be able to see it the best. So, or that would be illuminated. So I'm just gonna go back to this first tree. I'm not washing my brush. I'm picking up a little bit of white paint and I'm gonna, so for this tree, I'd have more on the right side because the moon is there, but I'm still gonna put a touch on the left side also. I want you to really be able to see the edges of the, moon, or of the tree. So again, I'm just kind of dotting a little bit down the side and you don't just want it to have a, a single line down the side. So you do want it to be pulled in a little bit towards the back too. And then maybe you'd see little, little peekaboo spots down this down the left hand edge. And if you feel like your edges are too bright or you want some more lightness in the back, feel free to just pop in, you know, maybe one tone lighter 
in the back to make there be a little bit more you know diversity in the colors or if it was too dark for you you know you could certainly lighten it up a little bit but I'm just going to go ahead and do that to the rest of my trees if your brush is a little bit overloaded a trick is to just squish it in the side of your palette that will flatten that brush back out and kind of give you more control over it. So again, I'm just kind of starting at the tippy top. This one's almost dead behind it, so I'll put a little bit more on this left-hand side, but it's almost equal equal parts from the right to the left, but you can certainly you can certainly use your your best judgment there and maybe I will add just a little little pops of a, just a touch lighter down that back. Yeah, that looks good. And then I'm going to put a bunch down here on the left hand side of this tree because it is in fact the side that's closest to the moon. And again, I'm trying to keep that tippy tippy top nice and and pointy so it still keeps the authenticity of this being a pine tree. And if you want to have extra branches just poking out and having fun and just being carefree along the way. You can picture this to be the perfect holiday tree that you and your family went out and picked. Maybe maybe this is some kind of evergreen that, you know, is lives outside of your house, but you, you know, just have have a whole bunch of fun with this. This is just intended to be a lighthearted and enjoyable kind of paint. Oh, that looks great. I like these final touches. It's like right here at the end, it's, everything just comes to life. It's, you know, it's bringing all the little pieces that we that we put into place. It's saying, yep, we worked well together. Now let's just finish it off. And then I've got to put this big light area over here on the left hand side of this tree. And I'm just going to go slow to start just to make sure that I've got my my little my little tips where I want them to be and then again if you feel like I feel like my brush is a little overloaded so I'm going to just kind of wipe it off on my paper towel pick up some of that some of that white and just start start back at it here and give myself a whole now I want this tree to definitely look like it's in front of that one so I'm definitely going to add a bunch of white on this edge along here and I and I want it to you know look look like it's got big heavy spots here and there and everywhere and you know look just nice and natural and it's just got some maybe there's a fresh snow enough for for to illuminate the ground so Santa can see his way around the around the globe to get all the kids their their nice presents and I think I think I'm almost done I just want to lighten up this I think feel like my back gray was just a touch too dark so I'm just kind of light putting a little a couple little more light little po pops of lightness there and then we have one tiny little step to go so once you've got your snow on your trees you can we're going to use our small brush you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step all right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of any painting, which is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner. I think I am going to be signing this in the bottom left corner. I'm using my small brush. I am using black paint. You could certainly use whatever color you want. You could sign it with your first name or a date or a symbol or whatever you would like is totally fine by me. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful seasonal festive image here. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.